Love him or love to hate him, Emeril Lagasse blazed the trail for celebrity chefs. So who's a fan and who'd rather shove that garlic where the sun don't shine? These chefs tell it like it is. Bam. Bam! Anthony Bourdain never minced his words. He called it like it was and brought a realness to food TV that isn't often seen among buttoned-up chefs who aim to please. When it came to Lagasse, Bourdain didn't pull any punches, especially when writing his nonfiction hits, including Kitchen Confidential. Bourdain referenced the Italian chef as, quote, fuzzy little Emeril, and more or less considered Lagasse as one of the sellouts for TV. All the TV chefs are so cuddly and adorable, you know, maybe I'm the antidote or something. Still, as Bourdain's own status grew, so did his empathy for Lagasse. When an updated version of his book, A Cook's Tour, came out, Bourdain called Lagasse, quote, not such a bad bastard after all, and a real chef once. He was able to draw parallels between both their lives and careers, and to recognize the hard work and responsibility Lagasse needed in order to run his empire. It probably also didn't hurt that Bourdain admired the fact that Lagasse was supposedly good in a bar fight. Guy Fieri came to the Food Network more than a decade after Lagasse, winning Next Food Network star in 2006. Since then, he's dominated the network and launched myriad shows and spin-offs that take up a large chunk of the viewing hours. He's arguably built an empire that could rival Lagasse's. In fact, both Fieri and Lagasse are estimated to be worth a cool $70 million. That fact aside, Fieri still seems to hold a great respect for his Food Network predecessor. In the Washington Post, Fieri called Lagasse the Elvis of food television and described his style as a full-on culinary rock concert. But Fieri has also mentioned the chef's kindness. He recalled a time when Lagasse loaned Fieri his private jet so he could travel from Mexico back to the States following a death in the Fieri family. While Fieri mentioned that he and Lagasse didn't know each other very well at the time, the two have gone on to collaborate on projects, including on an episode of Fieri's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. You know, Triple D shows up in your house and Emma Lagasse? Yeah! Gail Simmons may not have the star power of some other, more well-known chefs, but she's more than qualified to comment on Lagasse's influence in the food entertainment industry. Simmons is best known these days for her role as a judge on Top Chef, but she has a long history in the culinary media world, with experience in food writing and managing restaurant events. She's also made special appearances on Watch What Happens Live, The Good Dish, The View, and more. She described Lagasse's impact on the biz, telling Garden and Gun, he made cooking sexy. He was a manly man. Throw on some whiskey. Kick it up a notch. If you don't mind, we're gonna manja manja, a bruzy style, right here on Emerald Live. She went on to praise him for breaking down the 90s era stereotype that home cooking was strictly a woman's domain. The early days of food TV were filled with shows that were all pretty formulaic in nature. The host would stand in the kitchen and make a few recipes, and that was pretty much it. But this type of programming wasn't exactly nabbing the primetime slots. Instead, those hours went to fast-paced, exciting shows. And according to chef Aron Sanchez, they have Lagasse to thank for their existence. As Sanchez told Saveur, they were dump and stir shows. You get the recipe, you put the things in the pot, you stir. Emeril added flair. He was like the OG, you know? We always looked up to him for that. And if that lady next door gets crazy with you, put her in the pot and make her into jambalaya. Today, Sanchez continues to stay close with the chef and serves as a member of the Emeril Lagasse Foundation. Ruth Reichel may not be immediately recognizable to the average food TV fan, but she's certainly a queen to any foodie who's delved beyond the typical mainstream personality. Reichel's long career includes work as a cookbook author, food writer and editor, restaurant critic, restaurant owner, and novelist. She's also received multiple James Beard awards and has made her share of TV appearances on shows like Top Chef Masters. I love the physical act of cooking. I, I like everything that you can do in a kitchen. But even with a resume like that under her belt, she still has praise for a certain trailblazer. She explained to Saveur, Emeril was something new, a smart, funny chef who was showing people that chefs didn't have to be snooty or cook complicated food. Emeril was the first to go on TV and say, this is what a chef looks like today. He opened the door for everyone else. In 2016, Lagasse launched his Amazon Prime series, Eat the World with Emeril Lagasse. He traveled around the world with his celebrity chef friends to see and taste it all. It was the first time Lagasse tried this type of setup, and among the guests on the show was Sweden-raised chef Marcus Samuelsson, who had quite a lot of compliments for the host. Emeril, we can't thank you enough. You could have been anywhere, and you choose to include us on your journey. Samuelson hailed Lagasse for sending cooking into the mainstream and referred to him as both a mentor and a friend. Samuelson was also quick to note the importance of the show and Lagasse's presence on a more personal level. He recalled to Esquire, I couldn't think of a better ambassador than Emerald to tell the world, hey, they're doing it. It's delicious. 
Sweden is a very hidden gem, and he can share that. Eat the World with Emeril Lagasse aired for just one season, featuring six 30-minute episodes. But Lagasse's innovative legacy looks like it will last for decades. Darnell Ferguson is a relative newcomer to the celebrity chef scene, but you may have caught him on Worst Cooks in America, Guy's Grocery Games, or Tournament of Champions. He's also appeared on The Rachel Ray Show and countless network daytime shows. Today, Ferguson owns several restaurants, and his journey to success and stardom began with Emeril Lagasse. According to his interview with FSR Magazine, Darnell was a fan of Emeril Live, and as soon as he saw Lagasse's star power, he knew he was meant to follow in the chef's footsteps. Ferguson's journey was a winding road that involved all sorts of experiences, and not all of them were food-focused. He worked as a chef at the 2008 Beijing Olympics, spent time in and out of jail, suffered homelessness, launched his own restaurants, and then expanded his restaurant empire throughout the East Coast and all the way to Las Vegas. Eventually, he began appearing on TV, which ultimately led Ferguson to meet his hero. A surprise appearance by Lagasse when Ferguson was on The Rachel Ray Show finally brought the two together. Ferguson explained on the show, It all started with me watching him on TV and him living out who he was first. If he didn't do that, I may not be where I was at today. Since we're talking about Rachel Ray, there have been rumors that she and Lagasse had a contentious relationship. Lagasse was already firmly cemented into the Food Network lineup when Ray came onto the scene. She met him before her show became official, when she appeared on Emerald Live and started a kitchen fire. Shortly after, Ray debuted her series, 30 Minute Meals, and Lagasse got the boot from Food Network. Lagasse was quoted in the book From Scratch, Inside the Food Network, saying he wouldn't have given her a spot at Food Network, adding, she doesn't know anything about food. I would not put her on. Talking turkey with Oh, him. baby. But Ray sang a different tune, at least publicly, calling Lagasse one of her greatest cooking inspirations when he appeared for the first time on her morning talk show. Whatever their behind-the-scenes drama, the two frequently swim in the same circles these days. Lagasse regularly appears on The Rachel Ray Show, and you can find plenty of his recipes on the show's website. The two attend charity events together, like the 8th annual Beacon Celebrity Chef fundraiser in 2023, benefiting students in Wilmington, North Carolina. Ask any Julia Child fan who the real OG of celebrity chef and cooking TV is, and they definitely won't point to Emeril Lagasse. It also might seem like Child's and Lagasse's timelines could have never crossed. Julia Child was born in 1912, published her first cookbook in 1961, and premiered on public TV in 1963. Still, her career lasted so long that she did indeed encounter Lagasse after his rise to fame in the 90s. In 1999, Child sat down with the Television Academy Foundation, in which she commented on Lagasse and the Food Network in general. She remarked that while the network was facing a challenge in growing its viewership, Lagasse was an object of audience adoration. She explained that the draw was pure entertainment, adding, they're not going to watch a serious thing on how to bone a turkey or something like that. This was a stark contrast, she said, to the type of educational content that she offered audiences. But despite the clash in culinary approaches, her opinion of the chef didn't stop her from featuring Lagasse on her show, Julia Child, Cooking with Master Chefs. Sunny Anderson also got her start, in part, thanks to Lagasse. These days, Anderson is a familiar face on the Food Network, but she landed her first appearance on Emerald Live in 2005 after a Food Network staffer heard her on the radio. At the time, she worked in broadcasting, but made no secret of her love of cooking. Taste it. Taste what you just did. Anderson reunited with Lagasse on The Rachel Ray Show in 2015 and let everyone know exactly what she thought of him. She called her debut on Lagasse's show an out-of-body, slow-motion experience, then teared up as she said, There are only a few moments like that in life where you can really remember them as being not only a defining moment, but a game-changer. She also showed off a t-shirt that Lagasse had given her during the taping in 2005, claiming that she still wears it on the regular. It's clear that a whole lot of people love Lagasse. Some may be wary of him, but then eventually come around. And then there are those who really can't stand the chef. Of course, his non-fans include unsatisfied customers who purchased his branded products, like air fryers, kitchen clogs, and knives. But there are a few professionals in the mix, too. And chef Sarah Gruenberg is one of them at least reportedly, while she was being let go on a reality competition show. Gruenberg is a Chicago-based, award-winning Michelin-starred chef who has appeared on shows like Top Chef Texas and Iron Chef Gauntlet. She's also the chef and owner of the Monteverde restaurant in Chicago, which she opened in 2015. Her connection to Lagasse came about while she was on Top Chef, where she gained a bit of notoriety for allegedly dropping the F-bomb at the legendary chef. During an interview, Andy Cohen asked her about a rumor that she told Lagasse to F off. She denied any memory of the incident, saying she was under a lot of pressure at the time. I don't remember saying that, and if I said that, I didn't mean that at all. Ferguson explained that she had grown up looking up to Lagasse, noting that he gave her the push she needed throughout the competition. I love him. I mean, I love your food. <laughs> Thank you, Emerald. 
If we're going by the numbers, Martha Stewart definitely has an edge on Legacy. Her empire is estimated to be worth about $550 million these days, even though that number climbed to $1 billion during her brief prison stint. With more than 75 books, a range of signature products, and her massive Martha Stewart Living Omnimedia company, Stewart knows what she's talking about. And when she declared that Legacy was responsible for bringing TV cooking shows into the mainstream, it rang true. Got a big one here, Martha. In fact, Stewart has even invested heavily in Legacy's career. In 2008, according to AL.com, Martha Stewart Living Omnimedia essentially purchased Legacy's entire brand, including TV shows, cookbooks, and merchandise, for $45 million. Legacy also noted that the purchase brought about a partnership, resulting in appearances in Stewart's magazines. The Martha Stewart Living Omnimedia brand was sold multiple times since then, including a purchase by Marquee Brands in 2019 for $175 million. As of early 2023, Stewart and Legacy were still producing content under marquee brands and working on shows for the Roku channel. 